Hi, it's uh, won wonderful to be here. This is uh, an extraordinary event, and I'm happy to be part of it. Uh, I oh, how, how is this? Okay. Um, I, the story of my prosthesis, it started out as a glass eye. It's become plastic uh, since the Second World War. It's been about 70 years that I'm wearing it. And I wanted to bring it up because uh, it's created great lessons for me. I don't really look like what you see as me, and I'm absolutely certain that you don't see me. And I think that none of us really see other people as they really are. Uh, and I wanted to uh, bring this up because I think this, this uh, sort of inspired Janice, my spouse of many years, uh, to say that uh, everybody's real to everybody else but a fantasy to themselves. And I think that, that begins the idea of next places is that we have to uh, examine uh, who we are and uh, how to go about change. And meditations on next places is a set of ways of going into your own life, not looking outside for answers, but looking inside to see who you are and who people told you you are and where you want to go. And uh, life is a continuous change and how to do that well and with some sense of growth and development uh, to build a character for the longest life is uh, where I'm uh, thinking about. Uh, I call myself an anthropologist of the ordinary. Uh, most anthropology kind of goes out into the world and looks at exotic things. And I think all of us are, in some deep sense, as anthropologists, we, we notice things, uh, but we don't, uh, we don't do it fairly s systematically. Uh, we we uh, take track and we c put all kinds of categories, but how to do that well and how to do it thoughtfully is, I think, where we're at in the world. So I, I urge us all to uh, uh, think of ourselves as anthropologists of the ordinary. Uh, in my office at the university, uh, right behind a desk, I'm the only one who can see it, I have a, uh, uh, I have a little sign there that says, I teach, I touch the future. And this seems very important to me. I teach a course in teaching as a dialogue, uh, and not that they just study subject matters, but that they study me and they study themselves. And I hope that I can hope to inspire the future, uh, an old uh, guy like me with some kind of energy left and with some thought that we can work at changing the world, I think can be inspirational. And I think we can all work at being teachers. Uh, we're in a time when people are invoking this idea of change, change, change. Uh, but the question that comes up, I think for me, and I think at this moment, is uh, change toward what? We're in a reactive mode. We're thinking about changing from things. But it seems to me the important part is to set out some visions for the future. The idea of democracy in a changing time is always changing. And how do you educate people to want to be engaged in a world and rethink the world, not simply repeat it at all points, but, but to take it up to the, to the moment of the future? And uh, how to get to inspire that is, is part of our work. Um, I would like to read you a little bit from Next Places called Vision Quests. There are places, nations, cultures, times, where youth is directed toward a search for some essential being, vocation, calling, vision. Future portrayed, choices to be made early, search for the true way in life to be discovered, to be told by some force, knowledge, power. Once made, once the mantle of that vision is tried, worn, become the extended version of self, it is who one is, who you are. You have passed, you have future. An anchorage, a place to be, to return to. A quiet place in a changing world. That vision may turn sour and static, or long ago. That vision, a source of power, energy, motivation, was and is not now. That vision may cripple. A vision may cripple in its finality which endures. A decision made in youth, that vision may yet determine today, updated or not. A faith in youthful good taste? Now, now what? A vision that enables is a model, a mold, and against which to measure what is now. Which visions contain the space for approaching times? So when and where are we? We're in this strange moment in history. We're in a money bubble. We're like the Gilded Age that split apart a century ago. And we're, at the, we're apparently right at the peak of it. And uh, since my father, uh, a little Freudian story, uh, got caught when he was 20, having thought that he was going to be wonderful, successful, go to Yale and be uh, terrific, 
got caught in 1929 with a vision from his youth that he never quite got past. Uh, he got caught in, uh, in the fall of the stock market in 1929, and uh, I've learned a lot of lessons from that in terms of inspiring people to think that the vision that you took, that you had in a changing time may not work anymore, and the problem of life is how to move on and uh, create a vision which is uh, alive at the moment. We've just moved through, probably, or moving through, probably the largest technological moment in history. Uh, if there's anybody here who's not texting, please let me know. And we're also in a global moment. Uh, what do we do with vision uh, at a moment like this? How do we learn to incorporate all the people in the world? How do we learn to, to move on and look ahead and to set out something in terms of which we can act because the idea of democracy is not going to be something that was. It's going to be something that we're going to have to recreate in each moment. Uh, and finally, I'd say let us each consider our own next places toward inspiring our future, envisioning a meaningful world for all. And I think this is terribly important. If you think about who we were when we were 2 and 13 and 20 and, for me, 50 and 60, um, and to uh, who others told us to be, who we would like to be, and how to move forward in the world and fill up our lives and continue to move on and live a full and complete life and create other, a place where other people can find meaning in theirs. Thank you very much.